If you're new here, we're Laura and Aaron and we live in our self-converted wooden camper van, which we're always parking out here on the wild side. This week we thought to share some of our little hacks for coping in freezing temperatures when living in a van without any heating. It can be really difficult, which is why a lot of van lifers actually travel south to avoid the cold entirely and just follow the sun. Yeah, I think that is definitely the easiest option to just follow the sun and travel south. But there's something about the landscapes in the cooler climates that personally just feel so magical to us, like the evergreen trees and the snow-capped mountains. And I think the beauty of those things kind of lure us into sticking around even as the temperatures drop. So the main problems that arise in winter when living in a van are number one, condensation. So all the water vapour that you release when you're sleeping builds up on the cold windows and creates loads and loads of condensation, which if left unaddressed is a really big problem. Yep. Number two is just generally feeling freezing. Like it's just hard to get out of bed in the morning when it's warm under the covers, but freezing yeah. everywhere else. And I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, it's difficult for motivation. <laughs> Yeah, number three is gas pressure. So this is something that we didn't think would be a problem, but we found that our gas canisters um, really don't perform very well in the cold temperature. Like the pressure is really bad and we just have like a little flame on our gas stove, which is bad enough. Um, but that coupled with like the really, really cold weather outside just makes cooking very slow and very annoying. Yep. Number four is bed damp. So generally in the nighttime, your body's nice and warm and that temperature travels down through the mattress where underneath on the wood that's holding your mattress up, it's quite cold and then condensation forms and that can get quite damp if you don't kind of ventilate and do something about that. And if you start to get mold on the bottom of your mattress or mold on that wood, that can really lead to quite bad health problems. Number five, dry and wet clothes. So obviously if you've been out in the snow or you've gone on a rainy walk and you come back to your van and your clothes are soaking wet, it's really hard to find somewhere to dry these clothes because you don't want all that moisture, again, condensing on your windows. So uh, that's something that you need to figure out. Yep. And then number six, finally, is just the shorter daylight hours. So it's just generally harder to get everything done in a shorter day because a lot of van lifers try to get parked up before it gets dark so that they can kind of feel settled and safe wherever they're going to be sleeping that night. And sometimes in the heart of winter, that means getting parked up before 3 p.m. Yeah because that's when the sun starts to go down. So you just got to kind of figure out how to do everything you need to in a bit less time. So those are the main problems with winter van life. And now we thought we would show you what we generally do on a winter's day in order to kind of counteract all of those problems that we've just mentioned. In winter, we always try to wake up with the sunrise to make the most of the daylight hours. And the first thing we do is roll up our curtains to let some of that light in. And the condensation is particularly bad first thing in the morning. So the best way to get rid of this is to crack open a window or open some doors just to let some of that moisture out. It goes against our instinct to let more cold into the van, but honestly, we have to get rid of that condensation because a moldy van is much worse than a cold van. On cold winter mornings, we really like to start the day with a nice hot cup of tea. It just helps to warm us up and to make us feel like we can actually start the day. Our little camping gas canisters that we use to make our tea and our breakfast are kind of not brilliant at working below a certain temperature and so they need to be warmed up and it's pretty silly but the best way we've found to achieve this is to sit on them as if we're like hens incubating their eggs and after a few minutes of sitting on the gas canisters they're warm enough to actually produce like a really strong flame which makes our job a whole lot easier. A nice hot bowl of porridge in the morning just helps us to kind of warm up and we like to use a whole bag of frozen berries in there as well just to pack us with antioxidants and help our immune systems out through the winter. 
One of my favourite little hacks for porridge is to poke little pieces of chocolate down under the porridge so that when you suck in with your spoon, you find these pools of melted chocolate, which are such a happy surprise. We really notice a difference when the sun starts to come up. I think even if it's a really cold day, if the sun is nice and strong on the van, it somehow just starts to warm it up quite nicely. And another great way to warm up is to just go for a little drive. So for us, our only form of heating in the van is the hot blowers in the front. So we just blast them for a while and it's nice to just get a bit toasty. And it's also a really good way to dry any wet clothes. So if you just put your wet clothes on the dashboard and blast the hot air on to the dashboard that will dry your clothes out but just make sure if you do this to keep the windows cracked so that you can ventilate the space and not lead to any more condensation in your van. One really important thing that we do every day in winter is remake our bed to tackle any moisture that's built up overnight. So we're literally stripping the whole bed, so taking everything off and we're going to be flipping our mattress and all our mattress pieces over to the other side just so that any moisture that's built up can escape and this basically prevents any mould developing. Once the mattress has had some time to air out, we make the bed again and we start always by putting our electric blanket down. So this is really essential for us in the van. It's kind of the only way we can heat up in the night. And ours is a 12 volt electric blanket, but just make sure that your electric blanket is suitable for your electrical system. Otherwise, it may blow it. Another little hack that we've discovered is cooking a double portion for lunch so that we've got plenty of food and enough to last us for dinner as well. This means that we're doing all of our cooking for the day in the warmest, brightest part of the day and that we don't then have to go outside and cook later on in the night time when it's cold and dark. So we're just having a kind of big pan of vegan slop, which is just a bunch of veggies and beans and eating that with some wraps. And we'll probably have pretty much the exact same thing for dinner, either cold or just heating it up a little bit. We try to spend a good chunk of the day outside as well on like a nice strenuous walk. The more strenuous, the better to keep you nice and warm, provided that the weather isn't like rainy or super awful. It just makes that discomfort of van life in winter without a heater much more bearable when you're going on adventures and seeing new places and kind of feeling uplifted from the beauty of the nature around you. Whereas if you were camping somewhere kind of uninspiring, then it's going to make that struggle even harder. But if you can kind of get out on lots of nice walks in the day, then your spirits are going to be lifted up and it's just going to make it worth it. Whilst it's still bright, we like to get a hot flask of tea brewing just so that we've got a really nice warming treat for later in the evening. Before it gets dark, we like to make sure that we're parked up for the night and we get ourselves under our duvet and turn on our electric blanket. And to be honest with you, it gets really nice and toasty and sometimes we actually have to turn it off because it gets too warm. 
So it's not that we didn't want a heater in our van, it's just when we looked into it, it seemed that a lot of heaters actually create more condensation in the van because a lot of these heaters uh, create water vapor and carbon monoxide as byproducts, which basically means that we need to have some ventilation like cracking a window um, to release all the water vapor, all the bad gases, mm. um, which felt counterintuitive because mm. we were like, if we want a heater, surely we want to keep all that nice hot air in the van. Yeah, however, we did do some research and we realized that if you get a diesel heater, like professionally fitted, that they can actually exhaust all of the water vapor and the toxic carbon monoxide outside of the van, meaning that all of that nice heat can get trapped inside the van because you're able to keep your heater on without ventilating the space at all, which seems like the best solution. But the problem is they can be quite expensive, which is why we've been putting it off for so long, mm -hmm. a bit too long, but we've now decided that enough is enough and we're finally going to be getting a diesel heater in our van which hopefully means that we'll be able to enjoy nice snowy winters in the van without quite as much discomfort. On the whole we would say that van life in the winter without a heater is definitely possible but it is a bit of a challenge so if you can get a heater definitely get one because you don't want to be having to deal with all the discomfort really. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've got any questions about any of this, feel free to just drop them in the comments. We're more than happy to answer them and hopefully we can help a little bit. And we're going to be getting our diesel heater fitted very soon so that we can be going on some snowy adventures. Yeah. And we will see you in our next vlog where hopefully we'll be in the snow and having a really cozy time. Bye! Bye! <laughs>